I am at war with my body. This is what I look like. I do not like my body. I can't remember a time when I did. My hair is shorter than normal because for the last four months I've been shaving it. But a lot has been changing for me recently, and I knew I wanted to make a video about it, so I let it grow. And it's been driving me a little bit crazy. I'm also overweight, and that's obvious, right? What's frustrating is that I've actually been losing weight. I'm at 236 pounds now, down from over 260 in the summer. Uh, the numbers don't lie, but my body sure does. I don't feel any less fat, and I certainly don't feel any more comfortable in my skin. To be fat and hairy are two things which are, in American culture, objectively ugly. So I do everything I can to hide these things. I'll wear two shirts, one tucked into my pants so I don't show any skin if I, you know, bend over. I hike my pants up really high, which looks dorky as hell and doesn't feel great, but at least keeps my thighs from rubbing together when I walk, and I, I do walk a lot, and uh, assures coverage if I need to, you know, reach up high. I feel deep shame when someone sees any part of me that isn't my arms or my face. And honestly, it's dumb. It doesn't make sense. But this is how I am. I've been fighting it for as long as I can remember, and I've never come close to winning. What are you supposed to do when you hate the hair on your body. Basically every option sucks. There are creams that disintegrate the hair, but they stink and fuck up your skin. You can pay for laser hair removal or electrolysis, but these are both expensive, time-consuming procedures. You could get waxed, also time-consuming, also painful, and decidedly impermanent. The most accessible option is to just shave. But even that isn't great. The first day after shaving, you feel amazing. Your skin is soft and smooth, the way you remember it before puberty gave you the gifts you didn't ask for. It's amazing the difference it can make to a disembodied person to have smooth skin. But then you wake up the next day and your entire body is sandpaper covered in thousands of tiny daggers which have grown out of your skin like the world's most hateful trees and they all lust for revenge. <laughs> Some places, like the inside of your arm or your, your chest, if you don't exfoliate rigorously at least once a day, hairs will become ingrown. So. It's not enough just to shave, you have to maintain it, which includes shaving every other day at least. Every part of your body you decide to maintain adds exponentially to the amount of time it takes to maintain. 
most of us just don't have that kind of time laying around. Inevitably, you hit a depressive episode or a bad day, and you find you simply can't work up the energy to maintain your shave. So you fall behind, and the ever-increasing growth only serves to make you feel worse. You're reminded of the things about your body that you hate. Funny thing is, I didn't quite realize how fat I was until I started shaving my body. Hair acts like a shield in some ways, calls attention to itself so acutely that you miss other details. I was so obsessed with how much I hated that that I didn't really consider myself overweight in a, in a general sense. I knew I wasn't thin. But I, when I looked at other people, like people who were fatter than me, I think, like, yeah, at least I'm not as bad off as that person, which is kind of a terrible way to be, you know? Once I started shaving, I realized the shape my body was in, the, the, the weirdness of my proportions. It's evident that I've spent most of my life in front of a computer screen and not much place else. And of course, when I try to start exercising more, which I know I should do, my body rebels. Things that look easy for everyone else require incredible effort from me. I have friends who used to ask me to go rock climbing with them, and I had to explicitly say, it's too demoralizing for me to be in the same room as you when we're rock climbing. When you're thin, you don't need as much muscle mass to do the same kind of work, and I already don't have muscle mass, plus I'm carrying, you know, 60 pounds of extra weight on my belly. I climb up half a wall, I feel great, and then I fall over. And then I'm there for an hour or more, obliterated by 20 minutes of exertion when my friend has barely broken a sweat. You know, I just sit there. Nothing else to do but to watch him do his thing with what seems like no effort. And, you know, sure, if, if I just did it anyway, I'd get the practice, I'd get better, I'd build the muscle, I'd learn the skill, I'd start, I'd start getting good at it. But it's just not that simple. Nothing is as simple as pointing out an obvious fact and saying, do that. I can't tell you how many times I've started daily or weekly workout routines, felt great about them, worked hard, and then I hit a depressive episode and I just can't do it anymore. And it's like my body, slightly healthier than it was before, hates me for trying. So I rebound and just eat pure garbage because garbage is cheap and easy to get and you know, it makes you feel good. Healthy food is expensive. And yeah, you can make it work. But it takes a lot of work. And every bit of work your food takes to prepare is another bit of work you struggle to put into working out or shaving your body. You only have so many spoons. And that's the real problem. It's not my body. It's not my hair. I hate these things about myself. But why do I hate them? I've had depression at least since high school, and the fun thing about depression is it degrades short-term memory and taints long-term memory. So even my childhood, which I can remember at one point remembering as a relatively happy time despite being bullied a lot, it feels wholly sad to me now. 
because both of my parents are dead and because my depression has gone untreated for so long, all my memories of them, of, of our life together, are retroactively tainted with a, a gray pall that I simply don't know how to get rid of. A memory remains unchanged until the next time you remember it, at which point your brain overwrites it with the new remembering of the memory. So each time you play back a favorite moment, you're essentially poisoning the well a little bit with whatever emotion you were feeling at the time. And when mild depression is you on a good day, every memory starts to lose its joy. Everything happy becomes tragic. Depression, like a virus, slowly overwrites and counteracts everything good in your life. It wants the quickest, easiest satisfaction, which is never the kind of satisfaction that nourishes the soul or propels a human person forward. It pushes back against your efforts to make your life better. It is, quite simply, an illness. But because it doesn't look like one, if you're lucky, your friends will tolerate you complaining about it every once in a while. But eventually everybody gets fed up because nobody likes a bummer. I was drowning in the lake dammed over a dead mining town Cars in the homes lay still in the water The deeper I sank, the less I died The trees swayed slow in the tide There were people I loved below me singing And all the songs are about you And all the songs are about you And all the songs were about This past August, all of these problems coalesced into a moment of realization. I'm pretty sure I'm transgender. And to be clear, I'm still trying to figure out what that means or how I'm going to deal with it. If I want to take the well-trodden path, let's call it, I have an uphill battle ahead of me. You know, my chin isn't exactly subtle. My, my weight distribution right now is just way too weird. And of course, there's the hair. Maintaining appearances means maintaining a solid shave. Not to mention, you know, the hair on my head is rapidly thinning. And I'm only 28. I know hormone replacement therapy has a reputation for reversing male pattern baldness, but it doesn't happen for everybody, so I simply can't get my hopes up. And hair is a huge part of pulling off the feminine look. So what do I do? Do I buy a bunch of wigs? Those are expensive. They need maintenance. And there's a social stigma attached to wigs because of fucking course there is. You know, we can't have anything good. Can't have people celebrating who they are. And then the process of transitioning is itself rigorous. Building an entirely new wardrobe based off completely unfamiliar rules, learning how to do makeup well, learning feminine social cues, none of which is made easier by the fact that all of these things are mostly designed for people assigned female at birth, who, generally speaking, have smaller bodies than, than people assigned male. At birth. It's nightmare on top of nightmare, especially for a person who already struggles to maintain the energy to do basically anything because of my depression. I turned to a couple of subreddits for encouragement, but even in their helpfulness, they can be unencouraging. Our trans timelines, which is where trans people post before and after pics to celebrate the progress of their transition, tends to attract only the most attractive images, the most striking success stories. And I mean, yeah, that makes sense, you know? A fat, hairy trans person like me is ashamed of their body for a multitude of reasons beyond just gender. So just taking a picture of it at all can be painful. 
let alone posting it on the internet for everybody to see. Who knows who's going to use that for ammunition against you? And it's nobody's fault. It's not like there's a conspiracy. It's just an unfortunate byproduct of social stigma that fat people hide themselves from view as much as possible. So fat people don't see as many other fat people. And so they're divorced from the possibilities of changing themselves for the better. It was basically an accident that I ever realized transgender could apply to me. After a series of articles and videos described my experience as thoroughly as anything else, I actually decided to look into it. And it turns out being trans is different for everybody. Nobody has the same experience or the same relationship with their body or their gender. And on the one hand, that's incredible. But on the other, it makes for a really hard to communicate idea. So the media simplifies it to its purest narrative, the I was born in the wrong body story. And you know, if you look at everything that I've just said, that probably sounds pretty close to my story. But I was so fixated on my body that I never really worried about gender presentation. I didn't want to be seen at all. I hated dressing myself up because everything looked wrong on me, because my body was wrong. And I thought that was just because I was overweight, or because I was depressed, or because I was just an incorrect, defective human being. The problem wasn't availability of information, it was visibility. All the information in the world can be at your fingertips, and it doesn't mean a thing if you don't even consider that it exists. So many people describe the, the revelations they feel when they find words like asexual or non-binary, which describe their experiences. And, and that's an experience that I'm very much familiar with. You go your whole life feeling profoundly wrong somehow, and the only thing you can pin it on is, is you. Not just your body or your mind, but something inside that seems to be broken. Other people seem to have it so much easier. Why can't it be like that for you? And then you find a word that isolates the thing you hate about yourself and describes it not as a character flaw, but as a neutral human condition. And then you find out there's a whole host of other people with the same condition. And you realize you're not broken. You just had incorrect expectations for yourself. Unfortunately, we live in a monolithic society that instills in us a deep affection for the ideal person, a person who functionally does not exist. And every way we fail to live up to that a priori image is a way we come to despise ourselves. For the people who fit that mold, the world is their oyster. But for everybody else, all this, all the weirdos out there, every step feels like a sheer cliff face. And I have it easy. I'm white, and I have the luxury of choosing when and how I begin to express my gender in a different way. Despite everything, I live a life of comparable luxury, and I've gotten really lucky with a lot of things that probably have less to do with luck than I'm comfortable admitting. <laughs> I seen those boys kissing boys with their mouth in the street But I raised my son to be a righteous man path forward for me would be to lose weight, to start transition, to follow the steps and make progress, you know, but I don't necessarily want to do that. I am losing weight 
and I am slowly working my way up to transition. But I see in front of me a culture that has impressed upon me the worthlessness of my body, and I feel the torture I've inflicted on myself as a result. And I just... Fuck that. Be honest. You felt disgust the moment you saw me shirtless. Most people probably won't have watched this video past that point. I know I hate every second I'm like this, and I know it's going to be an emotionally devastating process editing this video. And I know the comments are going to be a really fun mix of, man, just eat less and exercise more, you know? And no, sweetie, it's fine. You're actually beautiful. And both of those sentiments, by the way, are equally reductive. Telling me how to lose weight doesn't tell me anything I don't know and doesn't tell me how help me lose weight. And telling me that actually I look fine doesn't make me look fine or feel fine. This video is not about asking for help or for compliments or for advice. I'm not, this isn't a cry for help. I'm not interested in engineering an inspirational weight loss series where through the magic of editing, you get to experience the rebirth of my life through losing weight. The point is that we shouldn't shame people for anything about their bodies, period. The point is that I shouldn't hate my hair or my fat or anything else about me, and nobody else should either. And that's precisely why this is a long video, because I need you to see me. I need you to see what I look like. This is my body, and it's just a body. It's nothing special. Maybe it looks like yours, or maybe it's wildly different. But you shouldn't be ashamed of it, as I shouldn't be ashamed of mine. And I know those words won't change anything. They won't help you feel better about yourself any more than making this video will help me feel better about myself. But the problem isn't availability. It's visibility. And if even one person sees this video who needed to see it, then I'll have done my job and it will have been worth all of the emotional torment. None of us benefits from the pressure we feel to be conventionally beautiful. None of us is better for anorexia or bulimia or self-harm or self-medicating. We don't improve our bodies by insulting the bodies of others. And we don't learn to accept differences by pretending they don't exist. I am at war with my body. Even me at my most optimistic can't see a time when this will fail to be true. But I'll never make progress if I choose to work against my body. We are forced, for better or worse, into cohabitation, and as a result, we must collaborate if we wish to survive. I hope that I'm beginning to understand. I hope that you are too. Oh shit, I wasn't expecting to fucking break down. Oh god. <laughs> oh. God damn it. Okay. This video is done now. I can fucking finally shave again. Ugh. Ugh.